The F ratio is related to the R squared and gives us a way to test for the overall significance of a multivariate regression. In order to illustrate an F ratio, and you can see here where I'm gonna end up in my example, my F ratio is gonna be just shy of 29 at the end. I'll explain how we interpret that. But I did need to imagine a data set. I have a very small data set of only 10 observations. You can see I have 10 rows. I am doing a multivariate regression. So I have two independent variables, education and work experience. So these are, these are years of. So here, for example, nine years of education, five years of work experience. And then my dependent variable is hourly wage. So for example, $12 per hour, $15 per hour. And then the overall hypothesis is, hypothesis is that the higher the years of education and or work experience, that that would be associated with a higher hourly wage. So given that data set, over here, I've used Excel's line est array function. I put the legend up here. I use that because I've forget sometimes where where each of these values are and what they mean. So I like to put the legend above the line est array function. In a previous video, somebody asked, why not? Why don't you use the regression tool that's in the analysis tool pack? My reason is simple. The line est array function is dynamic. So if I change values, it automatically updates. I think in practice, that's helpful when working with the data set. So here's my line est array function output. And as usual in the lower left here, I'm getting in general goodness of fit measures. And you can see right here, according to the legend, I'm getting an R squared of 0.89. So we, in the multivariate regression, we can call this a multiple coefficient of determination or a multiple R squared. And we're getting a multiple R squared of about 89%, which is very high. That's telling us that the variation in the dependent variable, in this case, the variation in hourly wages is about 89% explained by variation in jointly the independent variables. Okay, so the F ratio is going to give me a way to evaluate the significance of this R squared and also the significance of the overall regression. And in order to calculate it here, I'm gonna use the ANOVA table or I built an ANOVA table very easily from borrowing values here. The ANOVA table has three rows. I have an explained sum of squares, a residual sum of squares, and a total sum of squares. So here for the explained sum of squares, you can see I just borrowed it directly from my line est, the bottom row of my line est array function. Here's my residual sum of squares. And then the adding them together gives me the total sum of squares, which doesn't show up in the line est array function, but would naturally be here if it did, as just the summation of the explained and residual. So my total sum of squares is 617. Its units are the same units that would be the variance of my dependent. So these are dollars squared, not an intuitive uh, metric or unit really. I do have degrees of freedom here, I need that. And so I have degrees of freedom for my explain sum of squares. And I'll write this up here. So degrees of freedom for my explain sum of squares is going to be equal to the number of slope coefficients. So you sometimes see this as k minus one. You notice I have the k here. K is the number of coefficients that we're estimating in total, right? And it's also the number of columns in the, in the line est array function because we have an intercept and we have two slope coefficients, k equals three. But the degrees of freedom for the explained sum of squares is the number of slope coefficients. So it would be k minus one or uh, two in this case. And you can see right here, because we're estimating two partial slope coefficients, a slope coefficient for each of the independent variables. Then my degrees of freedom for my uh, residual sum of squares is going to be equal to n minus k, not the total number of coefficients estimated. And so that in this case is 10, this is my sample size, minus k of three is seven. And then you'll notice that degrees of freedom 
for the residual sum of squares is also the one that naturally shows up inside the Linest array function. So my total sum of squares has degrees of freedom equal to the two plus the seven. That one's easy. My final column here then is the mean sum of squares. And all of this, all of this, all we do here is divide the sum of squares by its degrees of freedom. So you can see I have here um, a mean sum of squares for the explained sum of squares is 275. And we could call this a model mean squared. And then we have here the residual sum of square of 66.6 divided by seven, and that equals 9.5. And we could call this the residual mean squared. So this is model mean squared, or I think also explained mean squared. And then this is residual mean squared. Now, then that's all we need for the F ratio. The F ratio simply divides the model mean square by the residual mean square. And you can see I get 28.97. And then over here, I just showed, by the way, we can also calculate the F ratio directly as a function of the R squared. We would take here the R squared divided by one minus the R squared. And then here we have a ratio of the degrees of freedom. In this case, seven and two. Seven divided by two is 3.5. And if we multiply those, we also get the F ratio, so that will match. Okay, so we have an R squared of 89% and we have F ratio of 28.97. What does that mean? Well, we could conduct a statistical test by looking up the critical value if we specify some level of significance. So Excel's got a function, f.inv.rt, standing for right tail. So this is an inverse cumulative distribution function, right tail. And in this case, I'm specifying a significance level of 1%, or put another way, a confidence level of 99%. And then I do need to provide it the degrees of freedom, in this case, two and seven. And the critical value comes back for me, the critical F value is 9.55. And so as usual with test significance tests, if our computed test statistic, in this case, our computed F ratio is greater than the critical value, then we re reject the null with this desired level of confidence. So with 99% confidence or at 1% significance level. In this case, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? Well, it is, there are two of them that are the same essentially. The null hypothesis is that the two independent variables here, education and work experience, jointly have no effect on hourly earnings. And the other, Null hypothesis is that the multiple, the true multiple coefficient of determination, the true multiple R squared is zero. So our computed F ratio of about 29 is greater than our critical F value of 9.55. We would reject the null hypothesis that our independent variables jointly have no effect on hourly earnings. And we would determine with 99% confidence that this regression is significance. And then as usual, instead of the this test of significance, I can go directly to the p-value by invoking the related function, in this case, f.dist.writetail. And now instead of specifying a significance level, I give it the computed f-value, in this case, 29. I do need to provide both degrees of freedom and I get a p-value, which is very low, 0.04%, and that is consistent. So I like to look at this as a way of saying we can reject the null with one minus the p-value. You can see here with well over 99% confidence, we can reject this null. So this finding is consistent, and that's really what we use the uh, F ratio for. Thank you.